In this bench test, we'll be looking at the Pentair Superflow variable speed pump that is installed with a single inch and a half suction and discharge line. And specifically with this test, we're going to be trying to dial in the system to be running at 25 gallons per minute. And we want to look at what RPM it's required to achieve that flow, as well as the electrical consumption that we experience during that. Now for this test, this pump is installed with 120 volts as the electrical service. So we want 25 gallons per minute. And I can see the flow meters in the background here. So I'll just keep dialing up the RPM until we've got something that's close to that. We might be close now, let's take a look. Okay, so that's 1390. RPM. I have two flow meters that will read in this range, so let's take a look. This is the high range meter here, and it's showing over 25. It's showing 26, 27 gallons per minute. Let's take a look at the low range flow meter. This meter's less accurate than the other one. So this one's showing just about 24 gallons per minute. So just a little bit under 25 and a little bit over 25. This meter has a 10% tolerance range, whereas this meter has a 4% tolerance ra range. So I'm more inclined to trust the number from this meter here. And it's definitely over 25 gallons per minute. 26, 27 even. Let's take that RPM down just a bit and see what happens to our numbers. Let's call it 1350. And let's take a look at that. That looks to be about 25, 26, 25. I would be happy enough to call that 25. On the low range meter here, we see 22. So again, trusting this meter a little bit more for our readings, I'd say that we're just about 25 gallons per minute. Single inch and a half suction line and discharge line, 1350 RPM. This pump is running at 120 volts. Amperage draw, 1.86 amps. That is 217 watts. This pump has a built-in wattage meter as well. Let's take a look. It sees as 235, so it's reading a little bit higher than my external meter, but they're both pretty close there. The flow rates that you experience with your swimming pool system versus this bench test will be different and that's because it's a dynamic equation when you're figuring flow rates the resistance to flow makes a big difference on how much flow you will actually achieve in a plumbing system for a given rpm for example maybe your pool pump is like mine and it's located directly adjacent to the body of water or it could be that you have a large property and your swimming pool pump is located a hundred feet or more away from the swimming pool. As you could imagine, those two pumps would be moving a different amount of water for a fixed RPM. But that just this test here gives us an idea, it gives us some numbers that we can crunch and look at when we're trying to evaluate flow rates versus electrical consumption. And when you compare these videos to the other videos that I've filmed, what you'll be able to see is that variable speed pumps across the board are going to consume less electricity as you turn down the RPM. However, there's a finite amount that you can turn down the RPM before you are no longer achieving sig significant flow or possibly any flow at all. And that's very important when you're trying to, to install a variable speed pump or program it for the first time and you're determining, determining well, what RPM should I be running at? You have to remember that you can't just look at the electrical consumption. You need to look at the flow that the pump is able to achieve. And unfortunately for most residential swimming pool systems, you won't have a flow meter installed and there won't be a better way for you to 
determine your flow rate other than to just go and put your hands in front of the returns and feel, can you feel any water circulating through the plumbing system? But I highly recommend for all swimming pool owners, go ahead and buy a flow meter. They're, they're a little bit expensive. They're a few hundred dollars, but they're critically important if you want to be able to get the most out of your variable speed pump and experience the most electrical savings. And that's how you do so is you're able to monitor your flow rates in real time. And that way you can dial down the RPM of your pump to the absolute minimum but where you are still realizing enough flow to actually make it worthwhile to have the pump running. If you found this information helpful, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.